YouTube. Welcome back everyone, this is Lee, and yes, today's today we'll be talking about the Leica Nautilux 50mm.95 lens versus the Mitticon Zongi lens 50mm.95 lens. So, without further ado, let's begin! So Leica versus Mitticon, a huge question online right now because a lot of you guys are wondering how close is the lens performance with this Mitticon Zongi lens versus the Leica lens. Yes, I tried to look at this online before I started my review, and let me tell you guys, I saw nothing but my peers comparing the actual Mitsukon lens to the Leica with no lens in hand. They just talk about a fairy tale story. A fairy tale story about the Leica lens and it blew my mind people did that. So in this video, we are actually gonna compare side by side Leica versus Zongi lens and we're gonna do the image quality test. But right before we get to the image quality test, let's get into some specs. So here is the Mitsukon at 800 USD. It has nine blades and 11 elements. As for the Leica, the Leica is $13,000. It has 11 blades and eight elements. And as for the lens cap on both brands, they are visually different as you can see. And as for the typeface, they are slightly different. You gotta take a closer look. Look at the 50 on the Leica and then look at the 50 on the Mitticon. The Mitticon has a little hook at the end of the five, and also if you take a look at the word feet, Leica has it spelled out, whereas the Mitticon has it abbreviated. And also, if you look at the aperture ring, definitely the numbers are kind of spread out on the Leica, whereas the Mitticon is kind of cramped in, so that's something for you guys to know. And also, the front toe of the lens will have the filter size, the 67 is the Mitsukon, and the Leica is the number 60, which means that the Leica is the smaller lens and the Mitsukon is the bigger lens. So there you go. And also behind the lens cap, um, Leica has their logo behind it, whereas Mitsukon don't have the logo. And the construction of the back of the lens, um, they're using different screws as you can see. Um, the screws are smaller on the Leica, whereas the Mitsukon, the screws are slightly bigger. And as for the weight, the weight of the Leica is 771 grams, whereas the Mitsukon weighs about 675 grams. As for the aperture ring, the Mitsukon aperture ring is, is slightly stiff, but it's very clicky. But the Leica, it's, it's clicky, but it's very, uh, yeah, it's loose. It's, 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 it is what it is. It's, it's very loose. It's easy to change the aperture if you accidentally bump into it. So there you go. And as for the lens hood on the Leica, it's very easy for the lens hood to just basically slide out, pretty much. It's just creeping out all the time. So uh, that's something for you guys to know. Yeah, it's not, it's not too hot. As for the Mitsukon, it's very stiff. So you gotta use both fingers to pull and push. And uh, yeah, and here is the Mitsukon right here. And as you can see, it's collapsing very subtle. Whereas the Leica, you need to twist the lens hood so it does not creep in. But if you don't, it's just gonna slam on the table. So there you go. And also I'm using a Nikon Z6 II with the MegaDap adapter. I'm using this combo right here just because it gives me autofocus. Whereas a Leica body does not give you autofocus. And since I need to do a side-by-side -side comparison, I need the exact focus. So definitely using MegaDap adapter is pretty awesome. All right, so here's the test. Leica on the right, Zonia on the left. This is 0.95. And already right off the bat, you could clearly see that the sky is more saturated on the Zonia lens than the Leica. And yeah, and both of them do chromatic aberrate. Yep, look at that. At 1.4, it seems like sky is still saturated on the Zongi lens, but the tower seems a lot less chromatic aberration on the Leica. Zongi is slightly chromatic aberrated. And you take a look at the edges, Definitely, the Leica does a lot better than the Zongi on the edges. Oh yeah. At F2, again, I like the sky on the Zongi and the Leica is okay. Um, overall, I think things are still the same. Definitely, the edges are a lot sharper on the Leica. And uh, yeah, wow, look at that, yeah. So Leica has sharp edges than the Zongi at F2. Here's 2.8. Um, the tower looks kind of identical. Sky is slightly different, of course, you get more blues on the Zongi. Sharpness edges 
is uh, Leica. Leica is very sharp. It's only slightly soft. There you go, at 2.8. At a four, um, yeah, story remains the same. You know, the sky is saturated on the Zongyi, whereas Leica isn't. Uh, the edges are sharper on the Leica, it seems. Yep. There you go. At 5.6, story remains the same. I like the sky on the Zongyi, but the Leica has the better sharpness on the edges. There we go. At F8, the same. I will say that the edge looks like it's getting even actually on F8. Yeah, it looks like it's getting kind of even at F8, but I think Leica is slightly sharper, just by a hair. All right, here's the next test. And already at 0.95, I would say that the Leica seems to be slightly more contrast. Um, they both have chromatic aberration, as you can see. Um, yeah, the, the color is very punchy on the Leica, that's for sure. Yeah, the sharpness wise, it looks quite identical, to be quite honest, like center sharpness. This is 1.4. And yeah, the sky is very saturated on the Zongyi and the Leica isn't. Um, background trees looks more saturated and sharper than the Zongyi lens on the Leica. But the blur, it looks, look at the blur in the back, they look quite identical almost, but uh, definitely the sharpness on the Leica for the edges are is pretty nice. Yeah, chromatic aberration right there. Oh yeah. Here's F2. Yeah, the tree is more saturated on the Leica than the Zongyi lens. I guess this is personal taste at this point, but definitely the, the sky is, is a lot saturated on the Zongyi than the Leica, but the edges seem to be well sharper on the Leica than the Zongyi. Yep, there you go. Here's f2.8. Um, story remains the same. You know, saturation on a tree looks a lot punchier on the Leica, and the sky looks a lot nicer on a Zongyi. And I'm pretty sure the edges on the Leica is, yeah, is sharper than the Zongyi. Yeah, the Leica has better edges. But center sharpness wise, it looks very identical. That's what blows me away on this test. Here's F4, story remains the same, a lot saturated on the Leica, the sky is a lot nicer on the Zongyi, and the edges are sharper on the Leica. Yep. The center sharpness is about the same actually, I couldn't see any difference. So that's pretty good. Here's 5.6, story remains the same. A lot saturated on the skies on the Zongyi. Um, the tree is a lot punchier on the Leica. No chromatic aberration at this point. Edges wise, it looks, for this one, looks almost there. I think Leica has the upper hand just by a hair, but it's very close, that's for sure. Center sharp is pretty nice. They look very even. Here is F8, and yeah, story remains the same. Center sharp is pretty nice. There's no chromatic aberration. Definitely the colors are a lot punchier on the Leica. And uh, around this point, the edge sharpness looks very identical, F F8. So that's pretty cool. Still no chromatic aberration. And uh, I don't know, I feel like the Zongyi is kind of sharper on the left. I, maybe just the contrast, maybe that could just be the contrast. All right, here's the portrait session, 0.95. Definitely a Leica has the better saturation. 
than the Zhongyi. Zhongyi looks kind of flat in a way, but the sharpness wise looks very identical just about. There's a blur in the background. There's my shoulder. The necklace looks identical. Yeah, not too bad. There's no chromatic aberration. That's why I wore the necklace. Um, yeah, there you go. At 1.4, things got a little sharper. Still, Leica has the better saturation than the Zongyi lens. And there's a bokeh in the back. I guess for portraits, edge sharpness is not that much of a big deal, I guess. But uh, some people might want it to be a little bit more sharper, I guess. But uh, I don't think it's a big deal in my opinion. But, but yeah, I mean, there, there you go, right? F2, story remains the same. It's a lot saturated on the Leica. Sharpness wise, it looks kind of identical still. Yeah, definitely no chromatic aberration on the jewelry. I have not seen any purple yet. So that is pretty good. And also I have a spotlight on my face, just to let you guys know. Yeah, center sharpness looks very identical. Yeah, look at that, just looks identical. Here's f2.8. It's all the same at this point, I guess. Um, yeah, looks very sharp. I like the saturation on the Leica. Looks like the hair is more rendered out on the Zongyi than the Leica. Leica looks a little burnt out on the hair. As you can see right there. Yeah. But that could just be the way I'm moving my head, maybe. But uh, overall, there's no chromatic aberration. Still sharp in the middle. I'm, I'm actually impressed with the Zongyi right now because it's it's very sharp in the middle, just like the Leica. Here's F4. And as you can see, the saturation is very nice on the Leica still. Sharpness wise, they look very identical. This is crazy. I I can't believe Zong is this sharp to a Leica. That's crazy right there. And the edge sharpness for the Leica for portrait session doesn't really matter too much. I don't see a benefit at this point. But uh, there will be situations where you might want more edge sharpness on your lens. So that's really up to you guys. Yeah, there you go. 5.6. Yep, saturation on Leica is a lot nicer sharpness wise. They look very even. No chromatic aberration on the jewelry. Here's F8, story remains the same. All right, here's the playground scene. And on the right is the Leica, left is the Zongi, and already you can tell that the Leica has more saturation than the Zongi. Yep, look at the background, it's very punchier. Contrast. And uh, saturation wise, definitely Leica has better saturation. Chromatic aberration, they both have the silver chromatic aberration. That's a big, you know, surprise actually. There's a tree in the back, saturation looks nicer on the Leica still. And I think by this point, everyone knows uh, the summary so far. I mean, it just looks pretty nice on this Leica right here. Definitely center sharpness looks quite identical. And the left side looks like it looks a little sharper, I believe. Yep, the saturation looks very nice. Sky though, definitely the Zongi has better skies than the Leica though. All right, here's F2. And yeah, just about the same. Um, yeah, you just get a little bit more edge performance on the Leica. And uh, saturation wise, they look quite 
identical, I believe, but uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to nitpick too much on that. It looks very yeah identical at this point. Um, yeah, I'm actually very impressed with the zoning so far because I, it looks very close to identical to the Leica. Almost. Just need some editing, that's for sure. And then you're just maybe 90% there or something to a Leica lens. Here's 2.8. And uh, yeah, look at that. Center sharpness is even. Definitely colors are more punchier on the Leica. I still like the sky on the Zongi than the Leica, which is a big bummer because Leica is very, uh, you know, expensive and you want the best of everything when you pay that much. Ooh, look at the look at the ground. It looks a little bit more saturated on the Zongi than the Leica. And keep in mind, this is close to a sunny day actually with no like clouds in the sky. So just keep that in mind. Here's a four. There you go. Um, we're just pulling hairs at this point. I mean, it's the same story. More saturation on the Leica, better skies on the Zongi, sharper edges on the Leica, and center sharpness looks quite identical. They both don't have crazy chromatic aberration. Um, and yeah. Uh, edge performance, definitely the Leica has slightly better edge performance. 5.6, there you go. Same deal. I think uh, it looks about identical at this point, right? But uh, is it me or the ground on the on the zoning seems a little bit more saturated than the Leica? But, uh, but yeah, that's very interesting actually. Maybe I'm seeing things, but, but yeah, let me know down below what you guys think. And uh, there you go. Here's F8. And yeah, skies are nicer on the Zongi. Saturation is nice on the Leica. I, I feel like a broken record player at this point. Edge sharpness right now looks quite identical right now. F8, okay, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, the background, look, look at the ground. I think the ground is a lot nicer on the Zongi than the Leica. Leica seems slightly overexposed. Yeah, very interesting. But the edge sharpness at this point looks a bit identical. And uh, yeah, there you go. You know the rest. All right, Boca time. Zongi on the left, Leica on the right. This is 0.95 and this is what the Boca looks like. Keep in mind the blades on the Leica, it's around 11 blades and the Zongi got nine. Let me know down below which bokeh do you guys like. Yep, there you go. This is 2.8. And a 4 looks all the same to me. 5.6, same deal. Yeah, at this point, everything looks quite identical. Yeah, there we go. F11 and F16. And that's for the flare. Definitely Leica and Zongi will flare. Look at that, look at the flare. But at least the flare is blue on the Leica, it's red on the Zongi at 1.4. The flare is still there. F2, whoa, look at that. Flare on the F2 for the Leica, but Zongi is gone. There's no more flare on the Zongi at F2. Yeah, look at that, interesting. Very interesting. And here's the editing section right here. Uh, I want to show you guys how to like get near Leica colors and all you gotta do is pull down the blacks and it looks quite identical just about, right? Give or take, you just gotta play around with the um, slider bar and same with the outdoors, just pull down the blacks just a little bit and you're there. And that's about it. Saturation wise, looks quite identical. So just to wrap things up, in conclusion, the Leica lens has the better saturation and also the better edge performance. But for the cons, it does not render the skies as nice as the Zongi lens, which means that you need to buy an extra filter for your $13,000 lens, and that just breaks my heart. And also, the flaring on the Leica, that just, that's just unforgiving right there. And as for the Mythicon, it has the better skies in this lens. And as for the cons, it did not do too well on the edge performance, and also the color. 
the saturation is not as good as the Leica lens. So the burning question is, how did the Zonia lens compare with the Leica? I think it's about 85%, right? 5% more, you just do the Lightroom edit like I showed you guys, right? Pull down the blacks, you get your saturation there to match with the Leica, right? Add additional five more percent to crop the edges so you crop off the softness. And at that point, it's about 95% there. The 5% left is basically the bokeh balls, which is the nine blades versus 11 blades, and also the flaring, which is red versus blue, so depending what you like. Now, is the Zomi lens at $800 worth that price tag? Most reviewers said the Zomi lens is overpriced at $800. After seeing this test, it's not even 10% of the price of a Leica lens. I think, honestly, I think that the Zomi lens is underpriced I think it should be a little bit upwards in the maybe a thousand five hundred range. This lens is getting you eighty five percent there to a Leica lens, and after the edits, roughly around ninety five percent, right? So, with all that said, thank you guys for checking me back. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely click like and subscribe, and don't forget to check out the merch store. And yep, take it easy. Peace.